Welcome back, friends. I'm Simon. I'm Ellie. And if you enjoy this video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell thing. That would be very kind of you indeed. And this is a very special one for us. Why is it a very special one? Well, we spent a lot of time growing up in the 90s and were massive fans. Like, I grew up just in the corner of a comic book store every summer, curled up in a blanket reading X-Men comics. But the X-Men animated show was so good. And I remember literally when we first met in the summer of 1999, we I remember we would videotape on VHS cassette, that's how far back this goes, the X-Men animated show on TV, and would literally fall asleep on the couch together watching episode after episode after episode. We're going to talk more about our favorite characters, our favorite episodes, after we've checked out the trailer for the new X-Men 97 show, which I'm so excited about. But more than anything, I need to know if this trailer has the famous na -na 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 theme song, which is surely one of the best TV theme songs of all time. How excited are we? Really excited. If you want to see what we think about it, then stick around until the end. But for now, let's go. Let's do this. Watch the series finale of X-Men next Saturday morning. Oh. I'm grateful to have the chance to say goodbye. I am. Proud of you all, my <gasps> X-Men. Fate lies in our hands now. 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 Oh my god, I got goosebumps. We have to stay vigilant. <gasps> the professor entrusted us with his dream. No matter how dark it is, we must believe in each other. Oh. We get this done by working together as a team. Jeez, Bob, keep buzzing in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh. To me, my X-Men. Oh, oh my goodness. Magneto. The last will and testament of Charles Xavier. Everything he built now belongs to me. What? Oh my goodness. Well, obviously they answered the most important question on are we going to get the theme song back? Fantastic. What did you think of the trailer for X-Men 97 that comes out in March in just over a month? I like how pretty seamless it was. It has been a while since I watched the um, original series. I think you've rewatched it more recently. It has been a while, so I can't remember very much about the storylines, but it does look like the work's gone into making it seamless. Like Style-wise, you've got the same kind of um, cell shading style. Um, I don't know whether that's done manually or if they're doing it kind of with um, computers now, but it looks fantastic. It looks so spot on. You've got the same character design. The voices sound pretty close as well. I mean, what do you think as a lifelong diehard fan? <laughs> well, the reason the voices sound pretty close is they brought back many of the original voice actors, which is incredible considering we're now kind of 20-something years past the, the last season. Um, just amazing. And actually, if you're doing the math, when I said we got together in the summer of 99, you'll realize this year is our 25th wedding anniversary. So thank you very much. Um, anyway, so yeah, they've brought back many of the original voice actors who are either voicing the same characters or additional characters now. So that's why it all feels and, and looks and sounds very familiar. You know, the other thing that dawned on me as well is one of the things that I loved about the X-Men comics, the X-Men TV show, and even the movies to some extent, was it was always making a commentary on society and the issues that society was facing. And it was always siding on the side of marginalized people. I mean, mm. mutants were just a, a metaphor for people who were being marginalized by society. And, and like the Mutant Registration Act, there, there were all these very 
very, very strong political themes that then led into like the, the Marvel Civil War comics and things that were very, very weighty that like when I was reading it as a kid, I think I learned more about society and societal issues through the X-Men than I did through the news. <laughs> it was it was so informative and so bold and brave. So I've already seen people whining about the wokeness of the X-Men. It's like X-Men's been woke for decades, so get over yourselves and uh, and yeah, and, and supporting minority communities is not being woke. It's just being a good human being. So shut up, go away if you don't like the wokeness of this. Obviously, we do. But I mean, seeing the, the whole crew back again, hearing the familiar voices, seeing the fact that it carries on from where it left off, I just, I cannot wait to see more of this. I've got to ask you, though, do you have a favorite X-Man or, uh, or you know, a, an X-Men villain? I think... I always liked Storm and Rogue. They were my favourites. I guess I always liked Rogue because there was just that thing of, I really liked how she had to learn boundaries to kind of keep herself safe. And I think that's an important lesson for people to have. Yeah. Um, I really liked that aspect of it. And especially with Storm, with her being so torn, kind of where her loyalties lay at a lot of points. I really think, I think the X-Men is probably one of the first franchises where I, you really got to explore the nuances. It wasn't, oh, these are the good guys, these are the bad guys. It was like, well, everyone thinks that they're the good guys. Everyone thinks that this is the right or the only way to go about achieving their goals and kind of keeping themselves and their families safe. Um, and I just, I really love those themes. And again, it kind of comes back to marginalized groups where often you end up with chosen families. And I do feel like with the X-Men um, and the school, it's one of the first examples that I think a lot of us were exposed to the idea of chosen family. That, mm. um, if you don't, if you don't connect well with the family that you're born into, like a chosen family can be there for you in just the same ways as the family you're born into. Um, and a lot of people have to find that if they do find that their identities are um, kind of different to the families they're born into. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I, I loved Rogue's character in the TV show and the fact that it showed in some episodes her backstory of inheriting powers from Miss Marvel and feeling like she'd stolen them from Miss Marvel, um, especially like the power of flight and everything. Rogue's ability in the, the show originally was just to absorb other mutants' powers, and she did so in, in quite a damaging way to Miss Marvel. So... Um, or to, to Carol Danvers, I guess. I forget the name of the character in the show because they changed it all up from the comics. But um, I also loved it that Rogue was so conflicted. I think it was the beginning of the Days of Future Past uh, story arc where she Rogue went to Muir Island and um, was was uh, about to have her mutant powers removed so that she could just be a regular human and Sinister was behind everything and it, it all went south. But I love that conflict in Rogue about do I want to be a mutant or not and who am I on the inside? Am I my powers or am I something more than that? Um, I think for me, similarly, because of the conflict, I absolutely loved um, a Warren Worthington III, who became Angel, who became Archangel. Mm -hmm. And his storyline, his relationship with Apocalypse was so amazing. I, I absolutely loved his, again, the conflict within him that he was kind of a rebel originally, but a very rich, entitled rebel. Then, obviously, he became pure evil when Apocalypse was around. But when Apocalypse was gone, Archangel was kind of this this conflicted, you know, half angel, half demon character, and 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 I loved his relationship with Psylocke as well. So, yeah, I think uh, I think Archangel was one of my favorite, and that whole Days of Future Past storyline. It was like part Back to the Future, part Terminator. You got to see Cable and Bishop, and ah, oh, just so good. So, yeah, some of my favorite TV memories of all time are within like Charles Xavier walking around the Savage Land as. Well. Well, like that whole Savage Land storyline was phenomenal. So yeah, I could go on all day about, but I think Archangel is probably. You know what though? I also felt like in the Days of Future Past uh, storyline, for the first time we saw Gambit become a very cool gambit previously was like cool with a k he was just like this dorky cajun character who was kind of just like a i don't know a b-rated wolverine or something i really felt like in in days of future past you saw gambit like go toe to toe with apocalypse and, and mm -hmm. take it was amazing um one other thing i noticed in this trailer that i forgot what we were talking about there for a minute because i was so excited is there was a point where gambit's riding on wolverine's back wolverine puts his claws together and gambit 
Gambit does a, a power up on his card, and then Wolverine flings that that psychonetic or whatever it's called power out with his claws. That really reminded me. And there were a whole bunch of X-Men and, and, and Marvel games on like the GameCube, like that that era of games console where you could play four player cooperative dungeon crawler and you could do that kind of thing. You could use one mutant's power and another mutant would power it up and blast out. And, and the more people you combined, the more powerful those attacks would become. And I love their reference to that in the trailer. It was awesome to see. Well, man, we could go on forever. But one of us could. One of us could, and probably will later after a couple of drinks. But, oh my goodness, doesn't it look good? What are you most excited about in X-Men 97? Please drop us a comment below. Tell us if you agree with us or disagree or just hate us because you think we're woke hipsters. That's fine as well. But either way, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, we will see you very, very soon, friends, on the next Nerd Safari. Peace out, nerds.